Greetings Basketeers, Josh Foscreen here, and what? There's, there's something behind me? I guess I'd better look. Oh my gosh! I wonder what it could be. I wonder if I put it there, because I wanted to show it to you guys. It's almost exactly like my normal bass, except it's my new five string. So um, I just wanted to show you guys my new toy. That is the point of this video. We'll talk shop a little bit and hang out. Uh, so set your expectations accordingly. That is what we will be doing in this video. Um, so this is the PV Cirrus that you see in most of my videos. It is not one of the ones that they're producing now. It was made probably in the 90s. I don't actually know because to my knowledge, PV doesn't have a very good serial number lookup system. Like with Fender Instruments, you can just type a serial number into their website and it'll tell you when it was made and where and everything. Haven't had that experience with PV uh, when I've tried. So I don't really know when this bass was made or exactly what woods it's made out of because I'm just not that techy uh, when it comes to instruments sometimes. I just kind of like what I like. Um, so this is the bass you see in my, most of my videos. And uh, it's pretty much as uh, I found it. These are the original PV Electronics. It's got these Tigerwood knobs on it that I don't actually like that much, but I haven't uh, replaced them yet. They're they're cracking in some places, which you can't tell on camera. A um, couple other... Let me put this aside for a second. I hope this is okay that we're just hanging out. I'm not going to, like, teach that much bass in this video. Um, but it, I just thought I'd tell you a couple things about this instrument first, because a lot of you ask about it, and I don't always respond... Because uh, part of my brain is just like, look at the headstock, it says PV Cirrus. The answer to your question is here. Um, but I have modified this bass an amount, uh, and by I, I mean me and my dad, who uh, repairs instruments and amplifiers and stuff, so uh, helps me with a lot of things I'm not really good at. Uh, we put a, uh, this little... Um, Ooh, what do you call it? This little plate on top of the input jack because there's a problem with how these bases originally set up where the input jack can start getting kind of shoved into the body of the base. So we've got a little plate on there. We just put one of those on the new Cirrus too. And of course, I have uh, replaced the original tuning machines with uh, hip shot gear because hip shot stuff is great. Um, and also you can see I've got the drop tuner here. So actually, let's play you a low E even though I can't, I'm not holding the bass. So there's the E and there's, there's the D. So, uh, so that's the hip shot drop D lever, and I just got, I haven't installed or tried it yet, but they're making uh, something called a double stop lever now, so I guess there's going to be two indexed spots on the lever, so I could go like E, D, C, or like, I think you could go like E, D, uh, or E, E flat, D, or E, E flat, D flat, just some combination of those things. Um, I'm excited to try that, um, and actually you can see... These uh, tuners are a little bit mitch, mismatched. These are, I think, newer hip shot tuners than this one. Uh, and the uh, the finish doesn't quite match, um, so it's a little bit franken bassy up there. And actually, if you watch um, older YouTube videos of mine, there was a period where there were like some silver ones and some gold-colored ones. Uh, so, yeah, this bass has gone through a few different tuning machines. Uh, and I've got a new strap. I should show you guys this new strap. This is the uh, Groove Gear Solo Strap Neo. Um, and uh, I'm really liking it. It's nice, nice padded neoprene. And uh, one of the reasons I got it is because they use synthetic leather, not actual leather from sad, sad animals. So that's important to me. Um, and also, I, what I was using before was called a comfort strap. P -p 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 uh, I believe is how you pronounce it. And uh, it was very stretchy, like if you pulled on it this way, it was super, super stretchy. And this is a little bit stretchy still, but it's m more solid. And I'm actually liking that more, especially for like neck bendy stuff. Like it's, the bend is starting sooner because the strap isn't giving as much when I push. And I, I really prefer to do neck bends like this versus the, uh, this thing. I do that sometimes too, but I don't know. This is just my comfort zone and it's more fun. It's like you're surfing with your bass. Anything else I want to tell you about my original bass before we move on to the five string? One thing, if you buy one of these old PV Cirruses, uh, another thing to be aware of besides that you should put a plate uh, on the input jack like this so that it doesn't like back into the body, is the original, um, this is an active bass, so there's two 9-volt batteries in this compartment. 
and I'm not going to bother like unscrewing it and showing you, but uh, the original battery clips in there, you know, that like clip on the top of 9 volt batteries, were not great, and I actually had them fail right before a gig. Uh, it was a very weird equipment failure. It was like the battery clips just like the wires came loose or something. So then someone like came and saved the day and like brought soldering equipment and <laughs> uh, so since then I've, I've put nice nicer battery clips. But other than that I love these bases. I highly recommend if you see one on Craigslist or whatever um, checking them out if you like uh, how you hear it sound in my videos. I do very minimal processing to it just like some compression and a little bit of EQ. The usual. Um, Okay, I'm going to make a loud popping noise and unplug the four string and uh, show you the five string. Here's another loud popping noise. Ooh, hate that noise. Uh, okay, so this also has all new hip shot hardware, which they were nice enough to send to me. And uh, I'm really excited about it. It looks really sexy and shiny. And um, I've just had a really good experience with hip shot tuning hardware um, just like staying in tune for ages like I just like pick up this bass after like days or even over a week of not tuning it and it's just like it's basically in tune um, it's really cool so uh, so this is the five string uh, and I've got these both strung up with elixir round wounds which is what uh, I've been using on my Cirrus for ages I really like, ooh, just a little bit of rattle on that, that first fret sometimes if I plug too hard. Um, besides the rattle, which I need to work out with the setup here, um, I really like the B strings uh, on the Elixirs. They just um, have a nice fundamental and uh, they're not as like, I don't know, other B strings have a weird tone that I can't describe that I don't like. <laughs> So, um, so I think this is basically all the same woods and stuff as the four string, although I don't actually know because I'm a dummy. One thing that's been interesting is I do find that this instrument sounds a little bit different than the other one, and I was just playing before you guys joined me, uh, playing with the pickup height a little bit. And I think I got it sounding a little bit more like the four string, which is uh, what I'm very used to. I've been playing that bass for almost 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do neck bends without the strap on. Yeah, I'm excited to to play some five string on some some gigs, uh, hopefully in the near future, because it's been a long time. Well, I guess I've had a couple five string gigs here and there. I've got that um that Fender Jazz you might have seen in my recent uh, video about playing the the Beast exercise on the five string, uh, and I like that bass okay. Um, but I don't love it, and so I'm excited to have like a kind of punchy, active five-string with, with humbuckers and that I can still get a nice like growly neck pickup tone out of. Um, and I really like the, the balance sound too. And um, the funny thing about these basses is that I don't use the onboard EQ at all. There's a master volume pickup blend and then bass mid and treble. And I have those knobs set flat like always, like 100% of the time when I play. Maybe it's something I should explore more, honestly. But um, I've just kind of gotten used to how these basses sound without actually using the EQ. So this is my five string. And uh, that might be all I have to really say about it. I hope that this has been of any interest. I'm not really accustomed to doing these just kind of hang out and talk to you videos. I usually like to actually present you with some kind of information. Um, uh, so let me know in the comments if this was like terrible for you or if you enjoyed it. Uh, I would I would love to know that. Takeaway points for learning purposes. If you buy an older PV Cirrus, um, replace the battery clips in the battery compartment and put a plate on the input jack and um, probably replace the original tuning machines with hip shot I would recommend. Uh, I love the hip shot stuff a lot. 
Um, and the original knobs, these are the original knobs that used to be on that base too, are kind of ugly, so I'll probably swap those out, and I'm sure you'll see that in a, in a future video. I'm not sure what I'm going to put there yet. If anybody knows like a company that makes really high quality, cool looking knobs for bases, uh, put the link in the description. I'm sure we'd all like to know because I found a lot of very cheap, crappy looking ones, which I surprisingly am not interested in. Oh my gosh, I want to tell you guys one more thing. Uh, if you've watched to the end of this, then you're probably someone who regularly watches my videos, um, in which case you will be interested in this. Um, I saw a couple things around the internet lately, um, people being concerned about the, the angle of my wrists when I play, like they're seeing like a lot of bend here, and also over here like doing the, doing the little, I don't know what to call it, uh, like the shadow puppet coyote hand. Uh, I just want you to know, I really don't actually play like that. I get into this lazy mode when I'm making videos for you guys, and especially with the right hand, like I just kind of rest my hand here, because I'm not like really playing that much, so it doesn't put a lot of strain on my hands. Anyway, I just want you to know I'm all about playing with straight wrists and if you come see me play live, you will see my wrists are straight for like 90 to 95% of the show. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I didn't feel like arguing with people who are talking about this on the internet. Um, but for those of you who bothered to watch the, to the end of this video, I thought you should know that. And I do think it's important to um, minimize wrist angle just to make sure that you're not hurting yourself. Um, that said, I don't think this is going to hurt your wrist versus this, but, you know, when you get in this territory, then obviously you're putting some strain there. So, uh, that's just, uh, something I just thought of now that I wanted to share with you. Okay, end of video. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, you're awesome. Have fun playing bass. See you soon. Ha 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 ha! The power of bass compels you. Subscribe to this channel for more bass lessons, or click on the video preview to watch another one right now! Ha 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 ha!